in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and take a look at a line graph for a, sort of a real world situation more of an application I would call it and we're gonna calculate the slope of this line graph and then determine the meaning of the slope of this line graph this skill belongs to the group algebra the skill itself is just to cal calculate and interpret the meaning of a slope of a line graph representing a given situation things you need to know prior to doing this problem is you need to know how to work with the Cartesian coordinate system. State points, you know, that type of thing. Know what a coordinate is. Uh, you should be able to read a graph, which includes the units and the axes, the scale, the full meal deal. Uh, you should also know how to compute the slope, either using the slope formula or the graph, the slope formula being uh, m is equal to uh, change in y over change in x. Um, and then finally, you should be able to interpret and state conclusions in an application problem. That's more of a general statement, but you should be able to do that. Now, back at our situation here, line graph shows the number of cars in a parking structure from 6 p.m. to 12 midnight on a Saturday. And as you can see, we have uh, some values for the vertical axis, and we have a scale selected for the horizontal axis. The units for the horizontal axis are hours of the day, and then the units for the vertical axis are the number of cars in hundreds. But just because that's the number of cars in hundreds, this point, for example, right there, not all of those points, that point right there would still be considered 6, 6, not 6, 600. And this point right here would still be considered 10, comma, looks to be about 2 not 10 comma 200. You use the units for the axes uh, themselves, the numerical units. Uh, and then we interpret that using the scale here, the number of cars being a hun in hundreds, we'd say that 2 means 200s. Alright, that's kind of an aside. Calculate the slope of this graph. There's a couple ways we could do this. You can either use a couple points, like I've kind of labeled here. In that case, you use the slope formula. Now remember the slope, a lot of people like to remember it as rise over run, which is a great way to think about it because it allows you to interpret the slope pretty nicely as well. Um, it's also delta y over delta x. It's a very common notation. The delta, capital delta, is read as change in, so that's a change in y over a change in x. And finally, the one that I think every author loves is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I don't care what your favorite fuzzy warm feeling is about the slope. You can use any of these, and that's absolutely fine with me. If you're going to use this last formula, which is the one that I think most people end up using, uh, just to let you know, it doesn't matter which point you call x1, y1, and, which, and x2, y2. So I generally pick the, the rightmost point to be my x2, y2, and I pick my leftmost point to be my x1, y1. That's just my habit, but it doesn't really matter how you do it. Now, a couple things you have to be aware of here. When you're writing out the slope, I would always start with a fraction bar then I always remember it's y values over x values. Remember rise over run and rise always means up or down so those are the y values and then the run is always left right those are the x values. And when I write this I generally stack my points so in other words I the first y value I'm considering is that y value of 2 right here and what I'm gonna do is write its corresponding x value right down below it. So I have the y value over its x value then I put a minus, minus, and then I move to the next y value and its x value. So the next y value was 6, and its x value was 6. The reason why I stack them like this is so that I never make a mistake. It, it really does matter how you stack these. So if you're choosing this point to be your second point, then that y value, too, should always stand over that x value of 10. If you choose this to be your first point, it still is stacked that way. That y value 2 will always be over that x value of 10. All right, enough. That was very wordy, right? 2 minus 6 is a negative 4, obviously. 10 minus 6 is a positive 4. And so when I read this, that is going to be, because 
Those fours will cancel nicely. Four over four is just one, so that's a negative one. Now, just to let you know that I'm not such a mean guy, I also uh, can count these uh, without doing the slope formula. I could have counted, could have said, well, you know what, to get from this point right here down to this point, or perhaps let's go to this middle point. So let's start at this uh, first point and go to the middle point. To get there, I would go down one, two. So if you're following along at home, rise over run, I didn't rise, I fell. And when you fall two spots, that's the same thing as going down by two, negative two. And then from there, I'll run one, two spots over. And you can see that's still a negative one. So you can either use the slope formula or you can actually count out the units. Start at a point, see how far up or down you go, and then see how far over to the left you go. And in fact, just to even get a more detailed, suppose that you wanted to start this point, this last point, and you wanted to count your way backwards to this first point. Could you do that? Sure. You go back one, two, three, four points. Now remember, it's rise over run, right? Rise over run. In this case, you're running backwards four points. So your denominator is a minus four. And now I'm going to go ahead and rise. Oops, I kind of bent down there. So we're actually right up here. I'm going to rise one, two, three, four steps from there. And if you do the math, that's still a negative one. So it doesn't matter how you, where you start, as long as you end back on your line graph there, you'll get the same value for the slope. Now the important part for most instructors should be, in my opinion, for an application, the meaning of the slope. And again, I refer to the fact that we're talking about rise over run. So what you're going to do to interpret the meaning of the slope of any given graph is you're going to write down the units of the rise and then the units of the run. The units of the rise are hundreds of cars. That's what the vertical variable represents is the number of hundreds of cars. And then the run variable is the number of hours. Hundreds of cars over hours. And now I will go ahead and include the unit that I calculated for or the value that I calculated for the slope. So the slope here is negative 1, and it's hundreds of cars. So it's negative 100 cars over hours. And that's actually read as cars per hour. So this means that the parking lot or parking structure is losing 100 cars every hour. It's not like they're losing it. Just 100 cars leave every hour. It's not like they've misplaced them or something like that. So that's how you interpret the slope. The most important part of interpreting slope in an application problem is writing down the units for the vertical axis and then the units for the horizontal axis, time or number of hours, because that really does help you with your interpretations.